This is Twit. There is a clock that we have to follow, Professor Laura. I suggest you go look at the hot clock for this show, because I was told, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, that I should wait to speak until right now and say hello to Sam Abul Samad. <laughs> he is a principal researcher at Guidehouse Insights. He is the podcast host at Wheel Bearings, which you can find at wheelbearings.media or your favorite podcast application. And right now he's sitting in front of my car. Well, Actually, not exactly your car, Leo. I bought this car, like though. And in fact, I put an order in on this car more than a, two years, like two years ago, October 2019, because you said I should. And I am very glad you did. We're talking about Ford's Mach-E, their Mustang, all-electric Mustang. And I, I'm a very happy driver, but you got to drive it a little bit this week, I hear. Yeah, um, I've had a couple of opportunities to drive the Mach-E now, and, and I've been driving quite a few EVs or, and plug-ins of late. Uh, in fact, uh, just before the Mach-E, I had the uh, the Jeep Wrangler plug-in hybrid, uh, which is also kind of interesting. Uh, but the reason I had the Mach-E is I was heading up, uh, up north, northern Michigan, uh, to Traverse City for a little vacation time and to attend a, a conference up there. And uh, so I asked Ford if they, if they had uh, a Mach-E available in the press fleet that I could borrow for the week uh, because I wanted to experience what it was like um, doing a road trip. You know, I've done you know, a lot of driving around my area with the Mach-E, but I've never taken a long extended road trip with an electric vehicle. And so I wanted to, to get a feel for what that was like, uh, particularly you know, going someplace like northern Michigan, which is much more rural than where I live. And... Uh, it was uh, it was overall a, a very positive experience. You know, it was. I know some of my friends and colleagues have had <clears throat> more challenging times um, with doing road trips with EVs uh, in recent months. I know uh, my friend John Volker, who's used to be the editor of Green Car Reports, is now a freelance journalist. Um, recently uh, posted about his experience on in the Northeast um, using some of the Electrify America stations. And EA is the, the charging company that's owned by Volkswagen Group. And um, he encountered a number of chargers that were just out of order. And I know, you know, uh, people who have encountered chargers from various companies that, that are out of order. And that is a, very problematic with EVs. Um, you know, with, you know, mo almost, you know, probably 99% of the time when you go to a gas station, the gas pumps are working. You can pull up at worst case, you know, maybe one pump is, is out of order and they've got multiple other pumps. And, you know, even if the entire station for whatever reason is out of order, there's usually another one not very far away. And so you can, you can get by, but with an EV at this point, there's still not nearly as many um, charging charging locations as there are um, for gas stations. And so you want to make sure that they're reliable when people arrive there that they can find, that they can use them to get charged up so they don't get stranded. And that's by the, the way, the number thing, one concern people have when you say, oh, yeah. it's great to own an electric vehicle is they call it range anxiety. And I yeah. understand it, although I uh, once you own an EV for a while, you realize, most of your trips probably are taken care of by your charger in your house. But Elon Musk right. was, Elon assuming, Musk was assuming you have off-street parking and, and yeah, availability if, to if charge. If you could charge it, yeah. 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 If you I live may, in an apartment, it's a little I may not recommend buying an EV if you don't have your own charger. But uh, yeah. <laughs> then, then you got to really do some calculus. But Elon Musk was smart when he started Tesla. He realized that was going to be an issue and created this supercharger mm -hmm. network. And most Tesla owners, I think, are very happy with that. So now yeah. we, as other car, electric car owners have to deal with this. Electrify America has really been a boon, though, right? I mean, it's all over. Oh, the yeah. Place. Yeah. I mean, they, they've built out a network um, very similar to Tesla's network where rather than the, some of the early DC fast charging stations were focused on the, the coastal areas of the country, which is yeah. where, frankly, most of the EVs were. Yeah. Uh, but now as we've started to get more EVs um, with longer ranges, EA focused on building out a network that spread across the country. So mostly you on go, freeway, uh, you know, along the major routes. Yeah, though, mostly, right? yeah, mostly near, near highway off ramps um, so that you could, you know, usually within about every 
uh, 80 to 100 miles, you could you'll be able to find an EA station. That's that's, that's the way they're, good. they're focusing on it to yeah. start with, which yeah. is similar to what you get for um, for uh, uh, Tesla superchargers. In fact, this location where this car was parked at uh, last Sunday um, was right on the other side of the wall. If you can see the, if you're look, look watching the stream, you see the picture. You know, there's some uh, equipment behind that wall there. On the other side of that was a half a dozen Tesla superchargers as well. <laughs> oh, there so, you go. <laughs> but you know the the you know fortunately during during this week you know I uh, I charged six different times in various locations because I wanted to uh, you know there, I charged more frequently than I needed to um, you know the car had has 300 miles of driving range so that wasn't a problem but I wanted to see what the charging experience was like and what I actually found for me at least was the bigger problem than the reliability of the chargers all the chargers worked for me was actually finding the chargers. Yeah. Um, now, which, there's a map on the car that points to the charger, right? There's a map in the car and also in Google Maps and, you know, in, in the ChargePoint app that points to an address for the chargers. Oh. But the actual precise location, you know, when you're driving down the road, you look, you see gas stations, you know, they've got big signs up in the air. And yeah. Like, Shell, chargers Ogo, don't. No. Exxon. No. You know, here's where you get your gas. For charging stations, they don't do that. And oftentimes, um, especially for level two chargers, um, they are they may be located in a parking lot or in a parking garage, and you don't know the precise location of it. So right. in this case, it was in the middle of a parking lot in front of a big box store, and it was a Sunday, and you know the lot was largely empty, so I could find it relatively easily. But you know because there's no signs there, these these chargers are usually about five to six feet tall, um, and if it was a full lot, I would have had a more difficult time finding them. And I know I have had that experience in the past is figuring out exactly where the chargers are. And then if they're in a parking garage, which one, you know, at least a couple of the chargers I used in Traverse City were, you don't always know exactly where, which level is the charger on, which corner of the parking garage. And so you're, you're driving around the parking garage for 10 or 15 minutes trying to find the charger. Now, there is and an Electrify America app. Does that do a better job? No, not really. No. It, it, it's about the same as what you'll find in in Google Maps or in the car. You know, again, it tells you the uh, the it's a general you know, the address. Location. You know, it'll tell you it's you know it's in in the parking lot of this mall, but it doesn't yeah. tell you the precise location. Um, and and that's that's a problem. I know you know when I've been in Petaluma, uh, you know the first time I went to charge um, it, when I was in Petaluma with an EV, there's a DC fast charger that's behind that outlet mall near yeah. your studio. Yeah. And you know I was driving around trying to find the charger. Uh, I drove around the parking lot a couple of times before I finally found it. You know, tucked in the corner behind the mall. On the, on the opposite side from the entrance of the mall. So most of the parking is on the other side of the buildings. And I finally found it over there. So this is the kind of thing that is an annoyance to people, that I think that they need to find a better way to uh, to do this, you know, either put more precise information in the apps or in, in, the, you know, in the mapping systems, or put up some signage, you know, or put a sign when you enter a parking facility you know, for it says EV charging, you know, second second level or, you know, behind such and such a store, you know, tell people exactly where it is. So I'm looking at my Electrify America app and I s remembered this from using it before. It gave me pretty good directions turn by turn and even showed on the map where, in this case, it was the uh, outlet mall, which is where my nearest uh -huh. charger is, where to drive. So I was able pretty easily to find it. But I agree that can be a challenge. There's the other problem, of course. Is you got to sit there and wait. <laughs> it's yeah, not like well, that, a gas that is also a challenge. Where you fill it up, and I guess uh, all you could do is bring a book and uh, and enjoy. But Sam or, Abul, Sam, know, pack a lunch, <laughs> pack a lunch. Yeah. Wheelbearings Media for his great podcast, Guidehouse Insights, employs him, and he joins us every week to talk about automotive technology. I want to solve this because I love the idea. I love my electric vehicle, and I I think more people should drive them. But I understand there's a lot of places it just doesn't make sense yet.